In this video, we're going to take a look at what I think is the absolute coolest Raspberry Pi 4 case made by Retroflag, and I'm also going to let you know how to win one for yourself. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, please consider going down below the video and subscribing as we are working our way towards 30,000 subscribers. Now, right out of the gate, I do want to let you guys know that Retroflag was kind enough to send me two of these. One of them was a pre-assembled, ready-to-go unit, and the second is actually one that they've allowed me to go and give away to one of the viewers of this video. Now, if you just hang tight through the video, I will tell you what you need to do in order to enter, but it's going to be really simple. Now, I'm just more or less going to be doing an overview of what this is and kind of explaining to you the big difference between this and any other Raspberry Pi 4 case that's currently on the market. And uh, before we get into the details and the specs, what we're going to do is we're going to just go ahead and open this up and I'm going to show you guys exactly how to get things assembled the way that you would if you were to open this up and want to get it running. So we're going to go ahead and crack the box open and uh, we're going to notice that we do get a few things in here. We are going to actually be given one of the screwdrivers that you're going to need to disassemble. I actually like the quality of these screwdrivers. They are magnetic tips and they work quite well. They don't strip screws very easily uh, and they're just really over are all good little screwdrivers to have laying around. And then next we are going to get a power cord and this is going to be to power up our entire system. Now the nice thing that Retroflag does is they make sure they give you the proper amperage. So you're going to be looking at a 5 volt 3 amp power supply which is more than sufficient for pretty much any application that you've got running on a Raspberry Pi 4. Now, as with all of our other Retroflag products, we do have an insert here that's going to give us a detailed step-by-step -step instructions on how to get this assembled. Additionally, it is going to provide us not only with the information, but also links in order to get set up for the automatic safe shutdown and reset scripts. And this is going to be the same as with any other Retroflag case. You are going to have to log in via PuTTY or go into the terminal of your Raspberry Pi 4 and go ahead and download the scripts. It's really simple you just pretty much enter a single command it downloads and then the power and reset buttons are going to work now keep in mind there is something inside of the case that does need to be toggled and i will show that to you guys once i get this thing disassembled and then finally, the last thing that we have is obviously our Nest Pi 4 case. And this is actually a really neat case. Now this looks exactly like the Nest Pi case that would have come out for the Raspberry Pi 1, 2, and 3. So just keep in mind in terms of what it looks like, it's the same, but there is a big difference here. And that would be that the flap that you normally insert a cartridge into can open up. And inside of there, we actually have a really cool replica NES cartridge. Now this isn't just your standard cartridge. This is not just a filler item that's just supposed to look good. This is actually a functional cartridge. And as I said earlier, my kit came pre-assembled, they included all of the things that I need, include a Raspberry Pi, but they also included a solid state drive. And this shell houses that solid state drive. And you're probably thinking, what's the reason that you would have a solid state drive? Well, the reason is because you can actually connect a solid state drive through a SATA 2.5 to USB and actually run all of your games or applications directly off of this hard drive. Now, there are a ton of reasons why you may want to do that. One, it's really simple to swap your games out. You don't need to be connected to the internet. Plus, you're dealing with a solid state drive, so transferring files, big or small, on and off this thing is going to be way quicker than trying to transfer over a network connection. But I will show you as I'm disassembling this Nest Pi 4 
cartridge shell, you're going to see it's actually really simple. It's just a housing. The solid state literally fits really nice and snugly in there. There's no other inserts. Once you kind of have it in there, all you've got to do is reclose it up, screw it together, and then you're good to go. And of course, if you take a peek at the bottom, you still have access to your connection. So if you need to connect this into a computer with an adapter, you can do that. Additionally, if we look inside of the cartridge slot, you're going to see that there is the 2.5 SATA adapter that is built directly into the shell. So now we're gonna go ahead and disassemble this thing. We're gonna show you guys the inside of the unit and I'm gonna show you a couple of the other things that are going on in here. Now, once this thing is disassembled, the first thing that we're gonna have to do is remove the USB port from the Raspberry Pi that's connected into that SATA to USB adapter. But once we actually get this thing disassembled and you can take a peek inside, you're gonna notice that there is actually a substantial fan in here and that's actually included in the kit. So you are going to be getting a really nice high quality fan as well as the thermal pads that you're gonna need for all the different chips on the actual Raspberry Pi 4 to keep things cool. So not only is this case really cool and very functional, but it does have a really good active cooling system. Now I'm not gonna spend a ton of time explaining how to get this set up because it is very straightforward, but I will mention that there is a GPIO connection that essentially is gonna control your shutdown and your reset script and the LED power indicator on the front of the console. And it's really simple to pop that in. It actually just gives you a little sticker saying, hey, this wire has to be on the far outside and you just plug it in and you're good. Additionally, we have the ethernet and the USB extensions. There is also a safe shutdown switch inside here that you are gonna have to toggle on if you do plan on using the power and reset buttons on the front of the machine. But that's actually more or less it in terms of what you have to do. You just connect everything up, screw it all down, and then reassemble. Now, obviously I'm a very big fan of this brand. I've worked with them in the past before. They've sent me products out for review and uh, this is no different. This is a review product that they did send out to me, but I do have to say in terms of all the available cases that you can buy for a Raspberry Pi 3 or a Raspberry Pi 4, if you are looking for that retro feel, these guys do it justice. They make these shells out of very high quality plastics. They fit together, they feel really nice and they look really cool. Now I am going to go around the case here and I'm just going to show you guys if we take a peek at the front of the shell obviously we have our power and our reset buttons along with an LED indicator and we are going to have player 1 and player 2 USB ports but as you can see one of them is actually your standard USB 2 and the other one is a USB 3 so you do have access to both a USB 2 and a USB 3 right on the front of the case which is nice. Rotating around to the right side of the shell, this is where we're going to have access to our micro SD card slot. And then around on the back, we've got access to all of the connectors that we would have had on the Raspberry Pi 4 itself, including both display ports, our 3.5 millimeter AV jack, as well as our USB-C port and our LAN port. There isn't anything going on on the left hand side, but if we do take a peek at the bottom, we do have a little compartment where you can store extra SD cards. Now, as I said, I'm not spending time showing you guys how to get this thing set up. It's really self-explanatory. The instructions do a great job. And really, if you're familiar with these cases, you should have no issues whatsoever getting this thing up and running. Now, earlier I did mention that Retroflag was very kind and they sent out two of these devices to me. One of them was intended to be given away to one of my viewers of this video. And the process to win is actually gonna be really simple. So I've gone ahead and set up a contest link in the description for gimmeit.com. All you've gotta do is just click on that link and go through, fill out your information. You're gonna to need to provide me an email address so that way I can contact you if you are a winner. Now there's going to be a few things that you're gonna to need to do in order to enter. Now the first one is absolutely not mandatory, but I would appreciate it if you guys would subscribe to the channel. That just helps the channel out, but it is absolutely not a requirement for winning this case. In terms of actual requirements, you are going to need to follow me on Twitter and there'll be links to that all in the Gimme It page. So make sure that you do follow me on Twitter. And additionally, you're going to need to do a retweet of a post that I'm going to make in order to enter. And once you've gone ahead and done that and shared the information, you will be able to enter into it. And that's pretty much it. Now, this contest is gonna run effective today. Right away, you can go ahead and start entering immediately. And I'm gonna run this for about a week. So I'm gonna end this on August 16th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So 
Again, I want to give a big shout out to Retro Flag for sending these out to me. I'm very excited to be able to do this giveaway. It doesn't matter where you live in the world. I'm more than comfortable shipping this thing out to the United States, to Canada, wherever you are in the world. If this is something that you're actually interested in, please enter. I am more than happy to send this out to you regardless of what part of the world you are from. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Big shout out to Retro Flag for sending these out to me. It is greatly appreciated. I can only speak for myself when I say I absolutely love these cases, but I think the general consensus within the community is that they do too. So definitely big shout out, but that's more or less it. Thank you guys so very much for watching, and I will talk to you guys again real soon.